I have been excited about this since the beginning of the year. Um, we have an amazing all-star cast um, joining us today. And these are women who have made amazing strides um, building their businesses and making a name for themselves in financial services. And I'd like to introduce them. Maybe we go around kind of this circle of who's showing up first for me, Tracy Richmond of the Meekum Group in Bethesda, Maryland. I'll give you kind of a, a sense of place of where they're joining from. Um, Laura Webb and Faith Doyle from Webb Financial Services in Asheville, North Carolina. Melissa Joy of Pearl Planning in Dexter, Michigan, um, near Ann Arbor. And Karen Coyne of Clarity Planning in, is it Hagerstown? Am I saying that right, Maryland? I just, always, yep. I just always think of Maryland. Um, so ladies, did I catch everyone? Yep. So we're so excited to have you here. Um, as I mentioned, I admire the marketing work that you all are doing. And I wanted to ask you here today to give this group some perspective on what you see as the keys to your marketing strategy for 2023. And to kind of kick that off, um, and I'm not going to ask any of you specific questions, so please just hop in. Um, but to kick that off, do you see 2023 as a year that you need to do things differently when it comes to your marketing strategy? And if so, why? Karen, I'm going to put you on the spot. I was waiting for Melissa to take that one. <laughs> the phone um, was ringing, so. <laughs> you know, I think that what I've learned over my career is that the more volatility there is, the more frequency you need to have with your communications. And I don't necessarily, I'm thinking of marketing in broad terms in terms of just comms, touch points, being in front of people, whether it's a email, whether it's a social media post, whether it's um, a phone call, um, you know, hopefully all of the above so that you, you know, you're throwing out different things and people are catching something or they're catching one of those things. Um, I just, you know, in the absence of information, especially in difficult times, people mm -hmm. assume the worst. It's just how our negative brains are wired. And if we, if there is a vacuum and there's an absence of information, they are going to be, you know, like Melissa and I were just having a conversation the other day about why are people calling, freaking out about their insured deposits? It's because <laughs> they need reassurance. So yes, I think if you haven't already amped up your comms, I would you know, start by thinking about how you can do that. I just read a statistic from um, some research done by FMG Suite and Investment News, and they found that 47% of clients wish that their advisor contacted them more frequently. And one thing I hear a lot from advisors is, um, I don't want to be um, in my client's face too often. I don't want to jam up their social feeds. I don't want to jam up their inbox. Um, but really, they want to hear from me more. Um, Melissa, what's your take on it? I just scheduled a meeting um, with the people in my office who have marketing responsibility on um some changes we're making, but also I said, what needs to go and what needs to be added to. So I think it's a constant evolution. And um, this is not just because I'm speaking at an idea can or webinar, but I think that um, FMG just posted about how many people use YouTube and, you know, in essence video. And the thing I think we need to change is more video and less, um, less of the, you know, kind of static communications when it comes to both social media, newsletters, et cetera. And um, so, you know, we're going to edit out some things that felt fresh four years ago and edit in some things that I think will be fresh and relevant for this year, like um, some short videos on topics and things like that. Even though I don't want to see my face or the replay, um, I think that's what it, today is asking for. Melissa, you are not alone. I cringe every time I get the link to watch the first draft of one of my videos. I'm like, do I really have 
Sometimes you yeah. just ignore it and let other people take care of it. Sometimes that's no, I, I usually um, <laughs> suck it up and actually click the link and watch the video. Um, but I think people are few and far between that really enjoy watching themselves on camera. Tracy, what do you have to add? Well, I think it's true that we need to be out there more. And, but I completely, it's not a surprise to me. I haven't talked to Melissa about this, but we're completely on the same page. Like clients need to see us. So the video is really crucial. And just because they're feeling uncertain, that doesn't need, mean we need to be talking about the market. We need to be talking about fluctuation or even talking about FDIC insurance. If they see us doing what we do, they know we're on the job. They know we've got it covered. And that is calming in itself. They don't have anything to worry about because we're not here talking about it. So that's one thing that I think is really important. But the other thing that I've been doing this year, um, during the pandemic, a lot of my communications were more personal, lifestyle, dogs, that kind of stuff. And this year we've added more content. So I've put like market related stuff. So I put a frequently asked question in the newsletter each month. And it's basically just the thing I'm already saying to all of the clients. So you know, what's the deal with the debt ceiling? And, you know, sort of that question that many people are asking and I stick it in there so that there's something so that they're, you know, the people who want that are getting it. Cause I did receive some feedback to do more of that. But I think just seeing that and seeing that we're posting things, even if it's not immediately on the topic they're worried about, it reminds them we're on the job and we've got it covered and settles, settles their fears. Laura and Faith, um... How would you say you're looking at 2023 with your marketing strategy? Are there significant changes or is it just kind of doubling down and sticking with what works? Well, I, th I think it's sort of, we have our game plan that needs to have some opportunity for some flexibility. And, you know, one of the things that we had done early on in our video taping career, we might need to update it now that we had a little more experience, but we did one that we called the emergency toolkit and we have pulled that back out. You know, we, we always forget that, you know, you do a video, you can reuse it. It's not one and done. You know what I mean? It can, it, it, it can. Um, so we've pulled that back out a couple of times. And so the point, I think there's a balance of addressing the, the time and the tenor and the fears, but then also creating some positive and normalcy about, things that people need to think about and planning on those. So I kind of feel like it's a, mi a mixture, but we've had a game plan, right, Faith? And we've kind of been working that and then adding as needed um, that meets the market circumstances. I agree with that. And, you know, some of the other comments as well. I mean, there's, you find yourself repeating yourself multiple times on certain topics. So make a video about it and then you can send it to people because it's clearly top of mind. Um, I think that really helps. The market validity toolkit is great, you know, when the market drops. And I think, you know, staying in front of your clients right now is more important than ever. Um, they are nervous. So you're, Tracy, I totally agree. If they feel like you're on the job, then I think it quells their fears and just reminding them of like, hey, this is long-term. So, you know, this is, we're going to experience a couple of these, especially if they're younger, you're going to have a, several of these before you retire. And how do you manage it? And how do you keep your eyes on your long-term goals and recording videos like that to those topics and getting them out? I definitely think helps. So we use that a lot in our marketing, staying in front of people and trying to, you know, be nimble as well. I mean, you do need to adjust. Yes. People are worried about being FDIC insured right now. Tell them they are, you know, look, make sure. Well, I love to hear all that you ladies are having to say about video. I do want you to share kind of a broader scope of what your marketing strategy is. And Faith, I'm going to start with you because um, of this group the major that are sitting on the round table, the majority of you are also um, podcasting and have other things you're doing um, in the marketing uh, arena. Give us the short list of what you see as the key um the key drivers of your marketing. Definitely. So, I mean, we start with a, um, a list of themes for the month. You know, we try to pick themes for the month that makes sense. Either if, if there's an event happening, um, you know, April this month is tax season. So obviously that's kind of our focus for some of our marketing pieces. 
um, the month before, uh, well, I guess April is tax season. So that's when we have done that. Women's um, History Month is this month. And that's what we're focused on. But we're also nimble. So if we need to change it, like if something specific happens, we'll do that as well. So we sort of have this game plan and then we can change. We also have a podcast, like you said, and a lot of the themes we do with everything else directs what we're doing on the podcast. So that helps us stay in front of our people um, and you know, utilizing Raymond James resources. So we're not always reinventing the wheel. Sometimes we're using things we have used in the past that relate to those themes. You mean using Raymond James resources, especially when they're putting out commentary specific to what is going on current in the market, just makes things easier. So we're trying to stay on top of current, but also we have a plan. Does that help answer your question? And those Absolutely. are things we're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. It's a good, it's a good, good bullet point list. And Faith is really great at building an internal SOP or standard operating procedure. Um, we actually wrote a blog about Faith's SOP um, because we think it's worth copying. Uh, but it really is key, I believe, to successfully executing marketing on kind of different levels, especially if you're pushing out different kinds of content on different platforms, um, having this like, who is assigned to do this task? When is it getting done? Um, boxes you can check off, having that kind of structure. And also things to not forget. You know, you may not have used that particular style of marketing in four months and you forgot all the things that go into before, during and after and how to promote it. It's all on the list. <laughs> yep. Melissa, podcasting, also one of your bullet points um, for marketing. What else is on your list? Well, I actually think the foundation of marketing is your website, um, because if somebody is interested, and I think somebody asked about talking to prospects through video marketing, to me, the it, to, to the extent I can be transparent about how I'm communicating with clients in a broader um, way for social media, for example, then if I communicate the same way I communicate to clients, I think it will be intriguing for some people. And then what my hope is, is that they look up our website or explore a little further. Um, and when they get to the website, I want them to make it clear that they're um, invited to be interested. And then it's very easy to schedule a meeting. Um, most of our introductory meetings are scheduled not through a phone call, or, uh, hey, this person might be interested, but just nights and weekends, people click on a Calendly link on our website. Um, and the second most important function is the part you push out, um, and especially through a newsletter. And so everybody that ever shows interest, we try to get to agree to receive our newsletter. And then they're getting the same content and details that we receive each month. And if you're just like someone who's stuck and has difficulty writing that newsletter, I like writing, but some months I'm just too busy. Um, Money Visual is a service by Ashby Daniels, who's um, a super thoughtful advisor, and he creates content that advisors can use and reuse. The reason you don't see his newsletters everywhere is because you agree not to reshare his content on social media. It's just for the newsletter to your email list. But I would recommend you checking that out if you felt like I'm stuck and I just can't get to that newsletter point. And then you can throw in your videos and you can throw in your company news. Um, and then, you know, in the newsletter, we include a couple podcast episodes. We have two different podcasts, one for divorce financial planning and one for general, primarily women who are millennials and Gen X. And um, so, we're staying busy on that marketing and all that. What I when I know it's working, it's when I see my friends and they say, "Melissa, you're up to a lot with the business," and um, that means the word is getting out, and that means that we have like fresh opportunities for people people to consider using us, as well as for our clients to remember that we're working hard on their behalf without one on one contact. That is a great um, content hack for your newsletter, and I have to share this particular newsletter from that's back ash to that's ashby's um i didn't even do that so <laughs> some of my some of the words are mine but so this is an example of and this is kind of a long format but um receiving this um i thought this is great content this is like it hit me at a time when um this was really on my mind and getting this from you with your branding on it made a difference and I did put some of my own words in there. I do enjoy writing, but there's just some months where I'm like, uh, it feels like a lot of pressure. Um, and so, so some of the guts of that newsletter were from Ashby. The visual definitely was. And um, 
I've made my newsletters a little meatier than they were, you know, at all time highs. Although we were reminding people that all time highs aren't permanent. Um, but we have gotten um, more in depth and meatier just to like kind of level set and recognize the tone of what, you know, people's thoughts are just like others mentioned about not being quite as, you know, kind of flippant in communications. One more question for you, Melissa, um, and that is you said it's really important for you at the front end of anyone engaging with your brand to give them the offer to get into your distribution list for email. Is there a specific way you do that? <laughs> so we could do better on that. I think that, you know, if I were saying what should we edit and what should we add, one of the things we need to add is like, regular invites saying, Hey, our newsletter content is like just for our subscribers and you're not going to see it on LinkedIn. And if you want to subscribe, here's how to do it. Every time someone schedules a meeting, we ask them if they want to subscribe though. So that is, um, one of the, like the biggest ways that we get subscribers. We're sending newsletters to North of a thousand people. Um, and we have, uh, about 200 households. So that's, you know, kind of our scope, it's probably closer to 2000 now. And our um, divorce area focus is a separate newsletter list that's all about divorce. So for our business, also, we add when someone books a call, the option to join the distribution list, the email list. And we try to make it kind of fun um, language, entice them to do it. Like, yes, this will help me a ton or no, I don't want this in my inbox. Um, but what I find is, I would say in the range of 80 to 90% of people do opt in um, when they are booking that call. Do you find that you're having success with that also? Yeah, it's 60 to 70%, I would say. And um, like I said, I, that is without being as intentional as I think we could be. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that that newsletter is so valuable because that that list is the list you have when you need to you know, on a day that the market's down a thousand points or, you know, whatever we, whatever's on next on the choose your own, the candy land of financial advisor life. Karen, um, I love how you, in my mind, are a very consistent podcaster that's doing podcasting with video also, um, because it, it, it's not that big of a leap, right. Um, to create that content and also create video. Yes. It's funny. So when I started my podcast, it was pre pandemic and we used zoom as the mechanism to record, but I never recorded video because of what your earlier points were, who wants to see themselves on video. So we used zoom, but I always told everyone, don't worry, we're not going to use the video, yada, yada. Well, quickly during the pandemic, everyone was on zoom. Everyone was comfortable being on camera. So I was like, this is ridiculous. We should be recording this and then we can recycle, reuse. And, and so that's exactly what we do. And in full disclosure, a couple of years ago, um, I kind of reassigned one of my team members to marketing and communications. That is her role. So I have a dedicated person to support me with, you know, organizing everything and sending it to compliance, making the necessary corrections, tracking all of that. You know, we have a game plan every week for what we're going to post, when we're going to post it, um, because it is very time consuming, very time consuming. I mean, it's, it's not that time consuming to do the podcast. It's time consuming to do all the other things. Um, but I enjoy it. I, um, it's, I, I see it as kind of a, it's, it's part marketing. Of course, you always want more ideal clients, but I also see it as, you know, we are capacity. Um, we have, we all have capacity constraints. We can only serve so many people. And so I see it as a way that I can help, you know, beyond just the four walls of my business. You mentioned one of the job functions was tracking. Tell me a little bit more about what you do and how you gauge success. Uh, it's very similar to actually what Melissa said, because I don't expect that when we do a podcast that we're going to get 10 phone calls the next day or emails and saying, oh, Karen, sign me up. How do I meet with you? How do I get with you? Um, but what I love is if I'm at a social event or I'm talking to someone and they're like, oh my gosh, Karen, I love that podcast that you did with Tracy Richmond. Or, you know, I just love that I shared this, this, this and this with my daughters because that's really important. That is like gold to me. I just, that really lights me up. And it knows, again, similar to what Melissa said, that 
you know, we're staying top of mind. And that's the thing. People might not need you today, but if you're constantly in front of them, there will be a time where they're going to say, I need to call Christina. I need to call Renee. I need to call Jim because this, you know, life event just happened. And they're going to think of you first because you're so consistent. Gracie, I saved you for last here because, um, I believe of all of the content creators and marketers we're talking to at this roundtable that you probably are putting out the most content um, at the highest frequency um, on social media. So run through kind of a laundry list of what you see as the key points of your marketing strategy. Well, we started this marketing strategy primarily to help reach the next generation and the generation after that from our existing and aging client base. So that's where we started. We wanted digital for those groups and we wanted to help our aging clients be able to pass on their good decisions like working with financial advisors and to share it in a way that was easily accessible. And that turned into generating content for the purpose of sharing. So um, we, we have uh, social stuff that is completely lifestyle related. Um, and I get feedback. So the way I measure this, my ROI on this is responses, feedback, people that tell me that they saw it, um, people that refer to it. I get clients that refer to it in meetings. I got an email once that uh, a client said she was going to forward it to everybody that she knew that fit that demographic because that video was so on point. Uh, that's a good one. And so the idea is you know, things that people can share. So some of it's lifestyle, some of it is financial um, best practices, and we try to aim it to three different groups. So, you know, sort of the retiree type, about to retire that group. That's our retire to your happy place series. Um, and then we have the sandwich generation group. So that's the stuff about parenting, about if you've got parents, you've got kids and kind of what they're doing. And then we have stuff that's for people that are just starting out. And we try to make sure that we hit some product, some video, something targeted toward each group every month. And um, sometimes it's the, the longer version video, some of it. And then we try to make sure that if the longer version video is for the soon to retire group that we've got some blurbs or social posts that are more targeted toward the other two groups. So we're trying to kind of have something for everyone every month and switch up who gets the big video. So we try to, to alternate through those. Um, and I think that, I think that the, the best part of this is when you get those things sharing across groups, right? When you get the, mm -hmm. um, you know, something that I put out for that's that's targeted toward those who are about to retire and a retire to your happy place kind of video. And I got feedback from the the Gen Xer who's like, you know, I want that to be me. And I shared this with my mom, but I also want that to me be me. So how am I in the right place there later? Because I really feel like, you know, they're sort of cross pollinating each other and they're thinking about how they could share. Um, and then just sort of the last point on this, we try after every single meeting, whether it's with a prospect or a client, um, even a get acquainted meeting with somebody who really isn't a good fit to become a client, we try to send them something because we don't want people to walk away with nothing. So we try to send them a link to something in our video library. And one of the things that we're working on doing is trying to organize it a little bit better so that you know we're not just always sending the same videos to people because they're top of mind for us, but that we actually can reach the various things. Um, so that people can have something that can benefit them. And ultimately, it's true that there are plenty of clients that, that really just aren't a good fit for us. And some of those folks really need coaching and need help. And so we do have that, that video library for the folks that are just starting out that has a lot of content that really can help them, even though they're not at a point where they're ready to work with us yet. And that just didn't happen magically, right? Like last year, you made the decision that it was an internal goal for the team to, we have an engagement. We are following up by sending an email with a video. Yeah. And, and I had a better handle on what was in our video library than the rest of the team, obviously. Um, and so making that 
sort of, we actually made it a summer intern project to go through and make a, like a chart spreadsheet, cheat sheet kind of with the links and maybe some text in there to make it really easy for my team to like find the link and find some text and throw it in an email that they're sending it out. Cause it won't happen if we don't systematize it and make it easier and easier. Um, and so it was a great intern project and actually that intern staying on and she's filing, you know, as we produce more content, she's putting it in there for us, which is a great way to keep her engaged. I want to hire her when she gets out of school. Um, and so it, it, you know, and that's, that's something we need to work more on. Um, but it's, it's helpful and it certainly helps the clients. And I've started to have a lot more repeat visits with clients, meetings with clients where they say, yeah, so I looked at those three videos mm -hmm. and these are the particular questions that I had about what you said in the video, which makes the time so much more efficient and gets us right to the heart of helping them instead of, you know, that's, you know, the stuff that I always say. I want to ask all of you one last question with a really short answer, and that is going back to Melissa's, this is sort of a candy land of financial advising. We don't know what is ahead in 2023, but tone is important. Laura, what would you say um, is your philosophy on how you want to present? What tone do you want to um, be speaking to clients in? Um, as things go up and down in 2023? Well, you know, I um, have a typically have had a tendency in the past to speak too rapidly. And I really try to focus on not only in person with the clients, but on the video to, to have a calm, confident, positive pace, you know, not a frenetic because the calmer you are, I mean, not to put people to sleep, but the calmer you are, um, and but also positive and confident that you are can be really helpful. And I find that in client meetings, when things get over, you just about kind of, you know, you can slow the pace down yourself by how you communicate. So that, um, I, I agree, tone completely matters, especially in this environment. Faith, what would you say for 2023? I agree. Just helping people put it into perspective. I mean, the headlines are made to make you freak out, right? I mean, it's made to make you make a decision to buy something or do something or take some action. But I think reminding people, you know, what the long-term goal is, what have you done to mitigate risk, um, you know, what can you coach them on of like, how do you stay calm through something like this? Are you making the right decisions? Are you thinking about the right things? And I think that's really, you know, what your marketing should be focused on is like, you know, Hey, how can we help you navigate this storm? Cause it's been one. <laughs> Tracy, um, you do an exceptional job of balancing um, kind of educational stuff and getting personal what would you say about tone is continuing that kind of personal um, piece of your approach important? It is. I think our our sort of underlying tone is caring competence. So that's what I want to come through. And the personal piece is it shows some vulnerability and it kind of matches to some extent, the level of vulnerability that clients feel when they're sharing what's going on in their lives. And so I think it's important to, to connect that way and not just be, you know, a blank slate on my side. Melissa? Tracy's reminding me, I one of my favorite things to tell clients is we don't want to just see you on a good hair day. Um, that, you know, <laughs> you need to be comfortable telling us the bad and how you're really feeling. And I think I've really been thinking about just because of it's March, three year anniversary of when the pandemic hit. And um, I think that's when, you know, most of us hopefully brought out our trauma informed um, advice. And I think one of the critical things in terms of tone, and that's why I said video is so good because it's more difficult to read. You read your own voice tone into a written piece, but um, is to acknowledge like, hey, are you tired? Cause the we've been in a bear market now for 15 months. Yeah, me too. 
but here's what I have to remind myself to do my job. And here's what it's important for me to remind you about. And this is what gives me back energy. So acknowledging that you're probably fearful or acknowledging that like it's flipping exhausting, I think is um, an important kind of com- opportunity or component for you to be like, Hey, look, you know, I'm not telling you that you need to just like ignore what's going on. Um, but also here's what I know. Every time there's been a down market, I wish I would have invested more, not less, you know, whatever else you want to say. And um, so that acknowledgement, I think, is couldn't be really valuable. I want to just pipe in really quick off of Melissa that don't forget people want to interact with people on social media. They don't want to interact with a company. So sharing that vulnerability and sharing your stories is going to have more weight than just pushing out some canned content about what the stock market's doing today. Erin, I saved you for last because I want to hear from you about Tone and your amazing resource. We have a QR code up for you. Oh, okay, sure. Um, Tone is 1000% important. Notice the difference I'm going to speak to you right now in this lower, slower, calm tone. And I can tell you, I don't know what's going to happen next. As opposed to if I say, I don't know what's going to happen next. It's two totally different messages. Um, And for those of you who were at the Women's Symposium last fall, we learned about, you know, why that's important. We learned about kind of alluding to what Tracy just hit, the charisma equation, which is equal parts connection and competency. A lot of people hate, we know, hate going to the dentist. They hate going to the doctors because they think it's going to be painful and awful and icky. And quite honestly, a lot of people feel that way about contacting their financial advisor. So my MO has always been, I don't want that. I don't want to be the dentist corollary. I want people to feel comfortable calling me just like they would say, hey, meet me for drinks at four o'clock. Let's do happy hour. Um, And so about a year ago, I called, I was doing call outs after the war in Ukraine, I think just calling people and, and not to lecture them or talk to them about markets, but just to say, how are you? And I left a message for one client. She called me back, I don't know, the next day or so. And she goes, she goes, you're calling me because the world sucks right now. Right. And it was like, yes, exactly. That is why I'm calling you. And it, you know, and it was just, that was all she needed was this touch point was this conversation to say, yes, the world sucks okay, we're doing everything that we need to do. We don't need to change anything back to work. Um, you know, and it was really that simple. It wasn't me having to explain the history of the S&P or what the Fed is going to do next. It was zero, none of that. Um, so I think, you know, we all have our own personalities. Let that shine through. Like you said, you don't just want to be a corporate mouthpiece. They want to hear from you and your thoughts. And even if you don't know, because we don't know what is going to happen next, you can still do that in a way that is calming and confident. Love that. And you get asked a lot of questions about marketing, right? So I get probably fairly regularly, I get just inquiries from fellow advisors saying, hey, tell me more about, you know, the podcast, or I'd love to hear, you know, you're very active on social media. Tell me about that. How do you do that with compliance, et cetera? So, you know, I, of course, like many of you want to help as many people as possible, but sometimes it's just, you, it's difficult. So one day, finally, I was like, you know what, it's time for me to set up office hours. And so I set up office hours um, twice a month which is a set period of time that um, people can sign up. I send them a Calendly link and they can sign up. And, um, and so that's a way that, you know, I'm controlling my schedule. They have an opportunity to pop in and do the, you know, can I pick your brain? And uh, yeah, I, yep. There we, oh, is that, is that a typo in it? I wonder if, well, anyway, um, I just noticed that this has, I don't know if that was in our, link or not but um yeah I copied and pasted it from your link Karen so if it's wrong but the QR code works I tested it multiple times <laughs> yeah okay so that's, Karen, no, that's is, what Karen, I was has, a unique, is, Karen yeah. has a unique spelling <laughs> yeah that's I don't that's funny I don't anyway if it works it works that's all that matters <laughs> <laughs> something to double check on on the next time you update that it looks good on Calendly Karen so don't freak out okay <laughs> Well, thank you so much all for sticking around. We want to tell you about next month. Um, We are doing a dive into SEO, um, what is important. 
and what you can ignore and what you should be tweaking this year that Sharon and I were talking about SEO and how it feels like it's we have a 1996 understanding of SEO and there is a constant evolution. Um, we have Johnny Swift from Impact Communications. Uh, he does a lot of presentations on what's really, what you need to know about SEO. This is not a sales pitch. This is a let's get inside and really understand the importance of SEO and what you can do to improve yours. So if you have time next month, April 19th, right after tax day, um, we hope to see you there. And everyone has shared amazing information today and just realize you don't have to do everything to be successful. Find the things that really resonate with you and then be excellent at it. And so for our quote of the day from Miss Karen Coyne, from our um, Valentine's gifts back from uh, 2020, we have, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. And so <laughs> just realize you don't have to be awesome at everything. You just have to be awesome at one thing. Yep. I love that check-in with your internal barometer. Is this a yes or a no? It has to be a hell yes to go forward. Thank you, ladies. It's been wonderful seeing you. Thank you all for joining us.